Hi y'all and welcome back to the garden. So today we're going to be talking about hydrangeas. I received a ton of questions regarding the fairy trail bride hydrangea that I planted two years ago in a video. People were continuously commenting on that video update on this hydrangea because it was a new uh, variety of hydrangea, a new like species of hydrangea introduced to the market two years ago by proven winners. It was originally released as a zone 7 plant. Uh, I decided I was going to trial it in my zone 6. Later that year, I think uh, Proven Winners changed that to a, to a zone 6. But the problem is, is it is still a hydrangea that blooms on old wood. Um, so in our really cold winters, which we had here, it may be unlikely to bloom. It's going to be similar to like an old macrophylla that blooms on old wood. Now, I did mention in a video probably last year, uh, I know it was last year, that the original one that I planted in 2021 in a container, I moved out into the landscape. I planted it right here uh, around this where this daylily is now. It died. It did not survive winter. Uh, I did plant it out probably in October, and winter wasn't actually that bad. So it's cold hardiness, it was a smaller plant. It was a four inch container, I think, or I may have got a one gallon from um, Proven Winners online directly at the time I ordered it online. And so it died and I was like, you know what, I'm going to replace it. And I ordered one last year from an Etsy store that had a beautiful, beautiful plant. It came in. I'll see if I can pull some footage. If I can't, then it's on um, a video last year, probably around this time or a little earlier in the year. That plant, um, I planted up front around the Sweet Bay Magnolia, under the Sweet Bay Magnolia. And then I decided to redesign the entire front beds because I removed the two blue spruces. So I moved the Fairy Trail Hydrangea from under the Sweet Bay Magnolia to under where the blue spruce used to be uh, last fall. And then I spent winter redesigning those spaces and the Fairy Trail had hydrangea did not fit into that design so I moved it again this spring it looks pretty pitiful uh, but I'm going to show it to you so all this being said is it did survive this winter the three gallon container did it may have came as a two gallon I can't remember I got it from the Etsy store um, so I believe and we had that really rough winter and I believe it is probably going to be hardy here now the reblooming capabilities like I mentioned may be a concern but I'll show you what it looks like right now. I actually just noticed it. It looks like it might have buds on it. So we'll give it a try and see if it blooms any more this year. It's recovering really slow. I moved it um, about a month and a half ago, and then we had the drought, and this specific bed is not on drip irrigation. But you can see here, I need to come in and cut all of this wood off, this dead wood. It did put on new growth. Uh, and these look like tiny, tiny buds there. So I think it might actually be pretty successful in this zone. We'll see how well it blooms, given that it's been moved twice within the past year. I'm not very um, hopeful that it's going to perform really well this year, but it did survive. So if you're interested in knowing whether it survives zone six, the bigger plant did, because probably it just has a better root system. The smaller plant did not. There was a lot of die off on this one. It did sit all winter um, and there was a lot of die back, but it, it did come back. So we're going to move on and show you some of the other hydrangeas that are blooming right now because hydrangeas have had a really great um, increase in development of different varieties that bloom earlier, particularly paniculata. So I want to show you some paniculata because if you're picking a paniculata, hydrangea for your garden you probably want one that blooms a little later instead of late in the summer like end of july uh, limelight of course is one that blooms pretty late it's the original big paniculata everyone loves this year mine got started really early because of the warm weather but it's still nowhere close to putting on buds yet now so we'll just start around and show you a lot of these paniculatas uh, a lot of all the hydrangeas, so we'll consider this kind of a hydrangea tour right now. So the limelight, not blooming, probably will not start putting on buds for at least uh, three more weeks. We are a little ahead, like I mentioned, so it could be two weeks. It's getting close. I can't imagine that it's going to start really quickly, but the amount of actual leafy growth these standards have put on this year 
is incredible. Really looking forward to seeing these in bloom. The Bobos are a little behind. Um, they bloom earlier than the Limelight, but they're just now starting to put on buds. You can see them here. Tiny, tiny buds all at the terminal shoots of all of this green growth. You know, Bobo is one of my favorite because it just produces buds on every one of these branches. And it is very, very thick hydrangea. So it's going to look really gorgeous right here. Now, the one I have on the patio up here in a container is already, because the soil's warmer, it's way ahead. Uh, and it is already producing buds and it's actually starting to bloom out here. So it's coming along nicely. This is one I actually grew from a, it wasn't a cutting, it was where mulch had fallen on one of the branches of one of these down here. And I just dug it up and stuck it in a container several years ago and grew it on. So it's looking really great. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever put this one out in the garden now that I have it on drip irrigation. It's loved this spot much more and it's been really happy. So really beautiful little specimen here in this container. So in the very back of the yard, there's not a whole lot of hydrangeas there. There are some by Endless Summer called Bloomstruck that I purchased from Home Depot several years ago for like $5 a piece. They were discount. They were very sickly, so they're still recovering. Those were planted, I think, the fall of 2021. In this location right here, I have Invincible Spirit, which is the hydrangea that Proven Winners produces for breast cancer awareness and the proceeds of all the purchases go to breast cancer research. Uh, and it is starting to put on growth as well. This one has never done really well right here, even though it's got a drip irrigation emitter tube. I don't run the drip in the backyard quite as much because of the incline. Uh, water tends to just run and cover these beds pretty well. But I think it gets a little more sun than it can be happy in this location. So it may have to be moved or removed somewhere else. Uh, we do have another oak leaf hydrangea that I planted last year on a video that's blooming. I believe this is Snow Queen, so it's actually put on growth really, really well. Uh, just started blooming here recently, and these panicles will continue to get larger. You can see the bloomstruck hydrangea right there. I'm not going to crawl back through these uh, shrubs, but every one of them that I kind of have poked around here, I've got blooms on them. So they're reblooming really well uh, at the end of June. Those are macrophyllous, so they will change color with the soil, but we have alkaline soil here. Pretty high alkaline, and it's hard to change the color of those hydrangeas, even by putting soil acidifier or some type of other acid on them, because we also have hard water. So high alkaline soil, hard water makes it difficult to turn macrophyllas or mountain hydrangeas that change color blue. I have one up here that I put next to the vegetable garden called Ruby Slippers. Um, and I love it. It started blooming so early this year, and it is a smaller oak leaf hydrangea. Hydrangea quercifolia is what it's called, the scientific name. Uh, and it started blooming really early, and it's got these beautiful panicles on it. And it'll get uh, three to four foot tall and wide, so it'll fill this space really nicely here with just an accent of some blooms next to the vegetable garden, which is growing out of control right now, you guys, just so you know. These tiny ones uh, in the backyard around this maple are wee white. And I mentioned I was going to remove these and switch them out with uh, tiny quick fire, but they're actually performing quite well here this year. I planted these in the fall of 2021 when I was planting all of those tiny shrubs in the garden. Uh, wee white stays really small. That's why it's called wee white. But the panicles emerge kind of white and then they turn a little pinky. Uh, they're some of them you can tell already have a little bit of blush pink on them like this one's a little more pinker and then they age like regular macrophyllas i mean uh, arborescence to a green color but in my garden i've had issues with them burning really bad so despite the drought we've had for three weeks several weeks ago these are looking pretty good i'm not seeing a whole lot of drying or shriveling up so these may actually perform better We'll see. So I'm not going to count them out. I've given them kind of a hard time based on the experience I had with some at the front of the garden, but these at the back of the garden are doing pretty well. So don't count them out yet uh, if you're looking at a small, tiny Annabelle type arborescence hydrangea. This hydrangea crammed in this spot is hydrangea uh, I never remember the name of this one, but it is one of my favorite after it got going. It took it a couple years because I bought it as a one gallon or three quarter gallon from Amazon from Proven Winners, and it's already blooming. So 
Give me a minute and let me think of the name and then I'll put it on the screen uh, after the video is edited. It's one that's not advertised quite as much by Proven Winners. And the color of these blooms last fall, they emerge white because it is a paniculata. They turn a little green, but these age to almost a purple, which was incredible. My favorite aged hydrangea last year. Um, definitely consider it if you do not have it. And I'm not sure why more growers don't grow it um, because I've never seen it locally and it has performed really well for me. It grew first year, it took a little bit to settle in as any shrubs, but it's grown pretty quickly and it has been so vigorous and produced so many blooms since then. So I will put a link to it below or the name on the screen so you know what it is because I really love it. It blooms earlier than the limelights uh, and almost some of the bobos. So definitely a winner in my, in my garden. Now there are not really any hydrangeas on this side of the house, but since I shot my last video, my Monrovia St. John's wort is blooming and it is wonderful here. This side of the house gets really warm and just kind of bakes. I actually think I have lost this Arborvitae, this fire chief. Uh, it's turned completely brown. It died a little bit over winter and it looks really, yeah, this is toast. That's unfortunate. Um, we'll just have to pull that up and remove it and I'm not sure that I'll replace it with anything this year maybe in the fall we'll see we've got some dahlias blooming those purple illusion ones they're really gorgeous check out this bloom these are the annuals some of the annuals that i got from stock slaggers also having sunflowers or something come up everywhere a squirrel must have hid a bunch of them around the garden and now they're after the rain they're being <laughs> coming up everywhere this is nuts this one is Tiny Quick Fire in this bed right here. This is the one that is probably one of my new favorite alternatives to an arborescence, a small arborescence like the Wee White. Uh, it has beautiful foliage. Right now it's green. When I got it last year, it may have been the fertilizer Proven Winners was using, but the foliage was almost blue. So maybe if I added some Ironite to it or something similar it would turn a little more blue but it blooms really early for a paniculata this one was putting on buds almost a month ago and i showed you in a video and they stay kind of small so it only gets you know two foot tall and wide maybe somewhere around in there and it's just going to fill this corner spot really nicely here and definitely check it out if your local garden center is not growing them i would go to them and encourage them uh, to grow it because it's definitely a winner here under the Sweet Bay Magnolia, I've showed you uh, tiny, tough stuff. And I have not put any fertilizer on these this year. I've hardly fertilized anything but the new stuff I planted. But check out these blooms. This is the best these have ever looked. And this one's actually kind of purple, which means the soil up here may be a little more acidic than other parts of the garden. But I love these. This is... I'm telling you, these did not look this good last year. And it may have been because we got so warm so early, but even though we had our bad winter. Now, this is a re-blooming mountain hydrangea, so hopefully it'll continue to pr produce buds at the top of the shrub. Right now, it looks a little sparse because all the blooms are kind of underneath. I'll keep you updated on that, but right now, this is looking really, really nice. And I'd kind of counted out this hydrangea because it just hasn't performed, and these have been here for probably three years now. But sometimes shrubs just take a little while to get settled in and you need to give them the time so they don't um, before you pull them out just to get an opportunity to set down roots good and i really love these the pink and the inside looks a little more purple right here i'm not sure this one's definitely visibly more purple blue some of them are more pink but really nice here from last video, you can see that these Tough Stuff Aha are getting really large. Look at these. I've showed you these florets. They just continue to get larger. Really beautiful, uh, small edging hydrangea that you can use. It gets one and a half to two foot tall and wide. Also a mountain hydrangea, so the color of the blooms can change with the pH. These tend to be leaning a little more pinker, but they're still wonderful. And look at all these beautiful buds they're putting on. These are going to be really gorgeous here in another few weeks, and they already are. This one up here in the front is Little Lime Punch. Uh, and I'm really excited about this one to see how it changes color in the fall. Uh, Little Lime Punch is a new, improved version of Little Lime, so it stays shorter. And the blooms themselves are um, actually turn 
pinker earlier in the late summer than little lime does and a darker pink at that so it's also starting to already put on buds on it in june uh, so much earlier rebloomer than limelight below are the ones i received from endless summer hydrangeas earlier this year so they were a little behind because um, they came from Minnesota, and Minnesota is much colder than here, obviously. And they were shipped bare root, but they are putting on a ton of growth and just producing a lot more buds. So this is Bloomstruck, one of the ones I showed you in the backyard. Bloomstruck has done a pretty reliable job of reblooming for me in the garden. And this is Popstar, which is the new one released this year that has really beautiful blooms and supposed to rebloom incredibly quickly. So if you are, do have any damage, it will come back for you. I think the estimate is three to four weeks, uh, but you can see all of these buds that it's producing on all of them right here. Some of them are really tiny, so we still got about a month or a few weeks anyway till those uh, pop out, but they're looking really nice in this spot so far. And less twigs, probably come through and cut back some of this dead wood now, uh, but I'm going to leave them for a little longer um, that way. I'm not cutting anything that might still come back to life since these were a little behind. Here we have a hedge of uh, Invincible Ruby, which I really like. I've had issues in this space with um, drainage and this hydrangea I've replaced twice in this specific area. I think I replaced that one once and I shot a video on it because this area was heavily compacted by a uh, bobcat when we had the patio put in and this also was not part of the original bed. So the soil was just really compacted. Bobcat made it more compact and drainage was a huge problem in our clay soil. It's gotten better over the years, but this one still struggles on the end. I replaced it this year with a new one. I think it was a two gallon one I ordered from Amazon from Proven Winners directly. But they're really beautiful. They're this chromatic looking ruby and they stay this color for a little bit. These are fresh blooms and then they will kind of age to like a dusty, uh, burgundy green color but I wanted a nice short hedge here these stay pretty small and they're accomplishing that goal right now so I am probably going to miss some hydrangeas in this tour I think I've mentioned on my channel I have like 150 hydrangeas in my garden um, so there's probably some tucked here and there that I may have skipped over and forgotten about the let's dance can do that I planted uh, earlier this year uh, gorgeous look how big this bloom has gotten Definite winter continues to produce buds everywhere. Uh, pink for me because of my soil type, but definitely this is going to be one to spread around the garden in other areas. Love it. And then we have, of course, the incredible hydrangea hedge, which I just posted a video on, a short reel on Instagram last night. It is looking really spectacular this year. This is the fifth year this, after these plants were planted. Uh, and they're as big as they've ever been and have more blooms than they ever have and are standing up much better than they have in previous years because I did brace them and we just had rain this morning. So you can see some of them didn't get the stake, but there is a stake under there that covers the front and sides. The back's not as much of an issue uh, because they tend to stretch towards the light. This is the north northwest side of the house pretty even northwest so they don't get a whole lot of sun and these may actually be getting a little more sun in the morning because of the blue spruce being gone so this one on the end at least gets a little more light in the morning but they mostly get evening light and shade throughout most of the day and do really really well i don't know how i would feel about these in full sun they're supposed to be able to take full sun that's probably not the south full sun so I would recommend, and I have recommended previously, that if you've got a hydrangea that says full sun, that means it's also going to need full water. Uh, hydra for hydrangea means water, and definitely for the first few years until they get established, they're probably going to burn anyway. So I would not put this maybe in full sun. We'll see. I might try one later in full sun and see how it does. In Ohio, it might be okay, but we still have really hot and humid summers here, and it would probably droop severely unless it was given water. So I would recommend a part sun location or a place where it gets, you know, some evening sun, not like really 
heavy evening sun or that delicate morning sun uh, would also make them happy, but gorgeous this year. And the last one that I just happened to skip over for some reason, and I don't know why, because it's one of my favorite paniculatas, is Pinky Winky. Um, it looks really good this year. They're quite big. They're starting to put on buds. You can see right here, uh, just little ones right now, but these paniculatas and the panicles on these paniculatas get over a foot long. Uh, they just continue to elongate over the summer. They're more open blooms, so they're enjoyed more by the pollinators. I really, really love these nice red stems that they have on all the new growth. Pinky Winky gets quite large. I've managed to contain the sizing over the past few years. These have been in the ground since 2020, so this is its third full growing season. It's really starting to take off, and they are under this willow, so they get less water, but they are on drip, kind of at the front of the border here uh, from the lawn and so really love this variety if you have the space for it which like, like i said they could be size controlled a little bit uh, definitely recommend it and love it uh, one other one actually two other ones i just keep walking around and forgetting about all of the hydrangeas i have in my garden Limelight Prime is an improved version of Limelight, uh, and it's supposed to bloom a little earlier. Right now, this is the only one in my garden that's showing a little bit of leaf drop, which if you're getting yellowing on your hydrangea inner leaves, that's fairly common on the paniculatas as they don't get as much sunlight and the new foliage leaves out. Some of the old foliage falls off. So let me show you these Limelights. You can see they got a little yellow leaf in there too. Don't be terribly concerned if you see the yellow leaves on your paniculatas. It just means that some of the older leaves are falling off in most cases. I've not had any issues with that throughout the summer. Uh, but these are not close to blooming yet. I got these when they were originally released. I ordered them directly from Proven Winners online. They had a limited batch of them the year before they were going to release. And I really love them. They stay a little smaller than Limelight. Six to eight foot tall and wide, I think, is the, uh, the rating. It, it may actually be four to five. Um, but it also has really dark stems, which is nice. So they're not r red as the Pinky Winky, but they are more of a brown. Some of the newer growth is more red, but really really beautiful hydrangea the last one that i have over here is uh, i think it's called it's not tiny quick fire it may be like little quick fire oh it's firelight tidbit that's it uh, and i was trialing it for proven winners a couple years ago and this clematis is kind of taking it over here but it's not blooming yet either it's a smaller variety also a really beautiful one for you to tuck in your garden to the extent you have a landscape that's smaller uh, but it's coming along nicely as well. And finally, I think that is all of that I can think of at the moment, the hydrangeas that I have in my garden. Very quick tour for you this time of year. Uh, things are just getting started and picking up. We had a nice rain last night, it appears. Um, so enjoying the summer. Thank you guys for following along. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care. Bye.